My images have taken me to some very, very dark places. And, and I've had people say to me, why do you make images that are so dark and so disturbing? And the thing is, is that I work intuitively, and if I'm true to the, the intuitive process, then um, I go where, where, where it leads me, and it, if it leads me to some dark places, that's okay. There's a darkness in all of us, and it's important to, to acknowledge the darkness. And Carl Jung said, the um, neglected cat becomes a, a tiger. You know, so in other words, if you don't look at this stuff, it grows and grows and becomes monstrous. So I, I really believe in following that intuition no matter where it leads us. I'm Connie Bowden. I've been a photographer for a really long time. I'm 61 and I started when I was 16, so do the math, a really long time. What? Right there, hold it, hold it, don't move, don't move. I, I started working in digital in 2007. Um, up to that point, I was black and white. When digital was becoming more and more prevalent, uh, it, it was really difficult for me because I had been, I put in all of these decades learning this craft especially the craft of the darkroom, and I got to the point where I felt like I was a, a master photographer. Uh, I had really mastered the craft. Uh, and as soon as I mastered the craft, whoop, the rug comes pulling out from under me and there's this whole new system coming along. Uh, and it was really difficult. It was a really difficult transition. I, I think it took me about at least a year um, of feeling lost and feeling old and a has-been and uh, Fortunately, I kept teaching, and you know, I started to, to see some of the possibilities with digital, and picked it up and started playing with it. What I appreciate about digital is that um, there's technically so much that I can control, so much that I can do with it, and be very, um, be very exact with it. You know, in the dark room, you're not seeing what you're doing when you're when you're enlarging. You're doing it all and hoping you're remembering what to do, right? Um, but in with working digitally, I feel like I have so much control. In the swimming pool, I went underwater with the camera, and I was amazed because underwater, the body looks blue, because the the water absorbs all of the colors that aren't the blues and the greens. But above the water, you have the full spectrum. So looking at the body, I was seeing this entirely new way of seeing above and below, this time differentiated by color. And I was immediately sold on, on exploring the body, this thing that I've been looking at all these years, but exploring it with this new layer. It, I really take hours to go through each shoot, and I shoot a lot. Um, I shoot a lot every every year, and if it's a particularly good year, I have ten images to show for it. People look to for explanations to images, easy ways into them, and and I thought that um, titles were were kind of giving people an in through my eyes that. I want people to have their own experience with my work, so untitled, with this long circuitous number after it. <laughs> I had to realize that um, what I was doing was an exploration. I, I had to be 100% present when I'm shooting to really be attentive to what I was looking at, and if I'm thinking I'm distracted. I'm not there. I'm not 100% there. So, um, so once I understand that that was my process, um, I started teaching it, and I started to see how successful that process is. And by working intuitively, I feel that I can go beyond what I know. I can go. I can discover things. I can. Um, I can push my understanding of. Uh, 
of the wor of my world. Um, intuition is one that, um, if we really follow it, we don't know where we're going to end up. If I set out to make particular images, um, I think they'd be really trite and obvious. But when I find these images through an exploration, through a very intuitive exploration, and it's, a, it's a, an act of discovery, then there is an element of discovery to them. There's an element of freshness to them, um, and not a contrived sense. Um, so I work very intuitively. That all of my images are um, obviously not of this world, even though none of them are manipulated. They're all seen through the camera. Um, but they don't, they're not representative of things that exist. Um, they're more um, metaphoric, um, uh, evoking things, hopefully, I think, evoking things that um, can be either spiritual or, or psychological or um, or sometimes they don't mean anything. Sometimes they just are what they are. You know, just an experience of something. These are the self-portraits that I did when I was 17 at Maryland Institute. Um, and I, t I was just playing around. I took self-portraits. I cut them up. Um, I cut it, not quite in half, so it's not right through the nose. Um, and I put this little picture, of this little Connie, inside of the, of the cut here. And when I look at this image now, I just think that this is, it's kind of remarkable that at 17, I had this idea of pulling apart my mask, which at the time, I, I wore many different types of masks, but trying to be heterosexual, trying to be something that I'm not, and taking this mask, and then there's this little tiny Connie right in there. I thought that when I rediscovered this image, I thought it was so, um, so touching. I've been working with Connie for 12 years, uh, something, something like that. I started as an intern um, after having her as an instructor or professor at, uh, at MICA. It was really exciting for me to get to see um, her process and get to be a part of her process and be involved in it. Um, because I've been a really big uh, fan of her work for a while and kind of seeing how things, um, how she works and um, how things developed was really, really exciting. I take the same attitude that I did in, in the darkroom and um, the skill, the, all of the post-production or darkroom um, things that, uh, um, tools that I, that I used were all to articulate the image. Um, going back to that intuitive process and, and believing that um, vision is such a powerful, powerful uh, sense and really wanting to honor that sense. So the darkroom work I did, the computer work I do, is all to articulate that image, to make that image um, uh, communicate as strong as it can be. It's not that I am against manipulation, uh, it's just in my process, it really doesn't make sense. I think I have many creative blocks all the time, but those are just like little burps. But um, yeah, I've had some major, major creative blocks. The first major one was 1997. Um, I was starting off the shooting season in the pool the way I always do. Um, and everything I shot, it seemed like I had done it before. Everything was redundant. I couldn't break through to that new, new way of seeing anything. The more I shot, the more discouraged I got. And, um, yeah, I was very bullheaded. I think I tend to generally be pretty bullheaded. Um, and it served me well, and then it served me well because I kept shooting. Um, even though I hated what I was doing, I hated the images I was looking at, I just kept shooting. 
And towards the end of the um, shooting season, I, I managed to get an image that I was really, really thrilled with. It was kind of a breakthrough on a level of seeing, and it was a breakthrough on, a, uh, an, on a, an emotional level of the, the read of the image was very important to me. Um, and afterwards, when I, af when I had come out of the block, afterwards, I looked at the images that I'd been shooting all summer long, and it's like, they're not so bad. You know, actually, I, I've been progressing all along, but I couldn't see it because it was like I'm wearing crap colored glasses, you know, all I could see was crap. So um, I had totally psyched myself out. And that is a block. Afterwards, um, I made a new commitment to photography. Um, and it really had pushed me to, um, to understand what was important to me and, and how I can psych myself out and how important that process um, of seeing clearly and seeing without judgment is. If I'm judging my work now, I know I'm, I'm not on my process. I'm not on my path. But if I'm looking at the work and looking at it in terms of you know, what's working in the image, what's not working, then I'm, I'm safely on my, on my path. We kind of go through phases of uh, binge shooting, we've started calling it, um, because uh, models are always available and because Connie's working with more than one, it involves uh, not only people's availability, but um, just kind of scheduling and it's kind of, it, it can kind of be a lot of juggling. Um, so it's helpful for me to be here. I was just so thrilled with this image. Uh, and it, for 1997, it was the only image that went into my portfolio. Um, but it was enough to, to energize me and for me to continue my lifelong commitment. When I look at the image, uh, it, it evokes several different things for me. One could be um, a birth of a fully grown human being um, coming, from the, coming from the chest. Um, which I find very symbolic of, you know, um, giving birth to yourself in a sense, accepting yourself, accepting that other part of yourself. Um, the other thing is I could see that hand as, as um, a, a touch so intimate that it's sliding under the skin and it's holding the beating heart or it's removing a tumor. This was the first time that I saw a reflection doesn't have to be a, like a mirror image. One thing that I find so interesting about reflections is that it, it gives us a different point of view. It's, it's, it's very um, much like what the Cubists were doing, with, which is condensing different, um, different points of view into, into one image. With reflections, uh, I've been able to explore a very similar thing. This one was done um, at probably in 2011. He's underwater and he's looking up at the surface of the water and that's his reflection. So this is just one person. Um, but what's interesting with the reflection is we see a different point of view than we do with the real. So the real is more like a profile and the, prof uh, the, the reflection is full on. But this image, I, I, it um, of course reminds me of Narcissus. Um, the, the, the story of the, of the Greek beautiful young Adonis type um, fellow who was, uh, he was so beautiful and everyone was falling in love with him but he was, um, he, he was, he would just cast them aside. He was very careless with people's feelings. And the god Nemesis, in order to, to, um, to get back to narcissist for his um, thoughtlessness, he um, made him fall in love with his own reflection. So Narcissus would look at himself in a, in a pool and he would just be pining for himself. And uh, 
But whenever he reached out, of course, the reflection would disappear into ripples. So this image reminds me of Narcissus, um, the story of Narcissus. Uh, one part of the image, this, this part looks very masculine to me. Um, this part looks feminine. So even though it's the same person, it's, it's looking at two different sides of, of one person. And I see this person is more in control and this person is much more um, into their own world, uh, maybe, a, maybe a, a moment of ecstasy. When I'm working in the mirrors, um, I'm playing with color, trying to understand what color is about. And I put uh, colored gels over the lights so that I'm projecting different colors. Um, so this is two people, one on front of the mirror, one behind, and one is lit with a red gel, so he appears very red. Uh, and I've combined the two so that they're making this a, a same person or one person out of two. Um, and I, this one I, I see as um, very tragic, a very tragic figure. Again, it, it evokes for me um, um, a myth from the old Greek myths, um, the myth of um, um, Odysseus. No, not Odysseus. Um, help me out. Oedipus. Oedipus. Um, the myth of Oedipus. Um, and when Oedipus realized that he had married his mother, he was so full of grief that he, he took nails and he poked his eyes out so he became blind. And this image reminds me of, of that kind of torturedness. Um, I want my photographs to um, continue to speak to people. Um, that would be my, my biggest hope. Um, the, I've put so much energy um, and effort into um, this, the process, and I, and I don't mean the, the technical aspect of the process, but the um, developing the, um, the theory, the um, sort of the spirit behind the process, um, that I want that to be part of my legacy as well. Um, the pro and the, the process that I'm talking about is the, that process of seeing intuitively, wanting that, um, wanting the, the art world to come back to a point of really appreciating seeing, um, appreciate the, the approach of valuing the seeing process over the thinking process, um, the intuitive process over the conceptual. Um, the, the visual process is, um, is naturally very, very intuitive. Um, leading with our eyes, letting our eyes lead, and pretty much we put our ego aside and we follow where our eyes are taking us, is the richness of the intuitive process. Um, keeping our minds out of it. Um, is a difficult thing to do, but um, as soon as we do that, then we're really on a very rich, um, rich path. Uh, Joseph Campbell, the um, great 20th century mythologist said, the eyes are the scout of the heart. And I take that to mean that our eyes are really leading, if we let our eyes lead and we truly follow, it's like we bypass this stuff and we go right to this stuff. We go to the stuff that is the essence of who we are, the essence of um, of what we what we are as human beings. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. You know, art at it, at its absolute best is a way for us to cat, connect, to connect to each other, to connect to ourselves, in in very um, very rich ways, ways that actually go beyond words. Um, so, I guess to sum it up, I would like my words to, my words, <laughs> my photographs to carry on. Um, that, that's the most important thing.